This is the British International School of Stavanger, located in the city of Stavanger in Norway. It is home to over 500 students from over 40 nationalities. The school has facilities for students from 18 months to 16 years of age. Our school's mission is to create role models for the future. Recently, visions to space have become much more common. In addition to this, um, China has sent the first mission to the moon since 1976. This has inspired us to create a water rocket and find the ideal ratio between water and air for maximum propulsion. For this experiment, we'll use two bottles as the fuselage, tennis balls as the nose cones, tape for reinforcement, and cardboard for a launch pad, then a lid for the bottle. To make sure the rocket flies straight, a nose cone is created. The tennis ball is centered on the bottom of the bottle and tape needs to be put around it to make the nose circular. For this experiment, we need to create potential energy using pressure and mass. By compressing air into a bottle using a bike pump, more and more air molecules go into the bottle. A great amount of pressure is built inside the bottle and the molecules push up against the bottle trying to get out. The problem is air has a lot of energy, but little mass so that it cannot create a lot of potential energy. The water is then used to add mass to it. Once the potential energy is high enough, the bottle cork will pop off creating thrust. Too little water creates too little potential energy, while too much makes the bottle too heavy to fly. We will test the bottle by filling one with one quarter of the water and the other with one third of, as these are the most commonly used amounts. This is an example of Newton's third law, as when the water goes out of a bottle, an action happens. Then when the bottle is launched away, there is an opposite reaction. In conclusion, we found out that the bottle filled one quarter with water flew slightly more than the one filled with one third of water. Next time to make the test more valid, we should test a larger range of water quantities instead of only two. Unfortunately, we did not measure the pressure of each launch, meaning that the pressure variation could have caused the differences in range and not the amount of water.